The world's population is getting older. By 2050, there'll be over 2 billion people over the age of 60. That means that age-related diseases like dementia will become one of the greatest medical challenges we face. I've treated countless numbers of patients now with Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease. The one thing that we, we really need at the moment is a disease-modifying therapy. So we need something that either slows down, stops, or ideally reverses the pathology. At the moment, there are no drugs that do that. One insight into this is that we can see at the molecular and cellular level that changes are actually taking place, place in our tissues and in our brain before the onset of disease. And in order to understand these early changes, we actually needed to look at the brains of healthy individuals. We've looked at 10 different brain regions, and the question that we wanted to ask is which cell type is affected most by aging? When you have a large public resource, sometimes actually the resource guides you and tells you where the most interesting type of phenomena are happening. This project relied very much on a really strong computational biology and Yane's lab has lots of expertise in that but actually the, the first author of this study, Lilak Sarek, has a very strong computational background. So the first thing that I did, because the data was really huge, I constructed a database that would allow me to ask different scientific questions. So I started by very basic statistical analysis, trying to find differentially expressed genes across age groups. We found uh, through this statist basic statistical analysis, I detected a small list of genes that were altered in all the brain regions. And what we found is that there, are, there were mainly cell-specific markers, specifically glial cells markers. Traditionally, we would always focus on neurons. So we've been very neuron-centric. And the prediction by many scientists would have been that neurons are pr primarily affected by aging. So the most surprising thing about our study was that actually that wasn't the case. And it was glia that were primarily affected by aging. Glia are actually a major component of our brain. And we have different types of glial cells. Some are forming some type of uh, envelope around the neurons. They're surrounding them, insulating them. Others are supporting them with nutrients, and other types of glia are more like an immune system of the brain. And the way that glia were affected by aging was even more interesting. Glia actually have, much like neurons, they, they have a, a postcode, they have a regional identity. And that postcode at a cellular level determines their functionality. So what we found is that astrocytes and oligodendrocytes lose that uniqueness of regional identity, and, and it sort of becomes more generic. Uh, we were actually very surprised when we first saw these regional patterns in the brain and we were really shocked. We were not expecting a very specific signature of aging to come out of this study because brain is a very you know, complex organ. These individuals were healthy, they didn't have a specific disease, so we expected to have a subtle maybe phenomena but nothing really common across all the population. That was a really exciting finding and the, the, the sort of natural question that we wanted to ask is which regions does this affect primarily? And we were really pleasantly surprised to see that it affects the substantia nigra and the hippocampus and these are the archetypal regions that are involved in Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. And the reason that I say pleasantly surprised is because we are really interested in finding the sort of cellular and molecular basis for what makes these, re these regions more vulnerable to neurodegenerative diseases. We need to now put the cellular changes in the context of molecular changes. We, we're going to work a lot with Ricky in ways how to model these interactions in cellular cultures. Now that we've established the importance of, of glia in aging of the human brain, there are many different avenues to explore. One is the relevance of glial regional identity in neurodegeneration. So I think looking at that in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, is going to be critical um, to, to understand disease mechanisms at a cellular level.